What up, YouTube? It's your boy, King Cobra. So, that video I made that was like four hours and 20 minutes long where I had my little freak out, I deleted it from my channel, but one of my asshole copycat channels saved it. And apparently, I yelled at a female who was checking up on me, and I guess I might have made her cry. And if I did that, I want to sincerely apologize. People go out of their way to fuck with me all the time. And I'm always on the defensive because of it. Well, I don't even fucking remember what happened. You know, people are saying this and that. And honestly, I apologize for that. <sighs> I'm loving my new dye job. This thing is sweet. One of my YouTube fans paid a little bit over $100 to have my hair professionally dyed by a salonist. And the gal who did it is phenomenal. The salon I went to is getting the Cobra seal of approval. Black and green, motherfucker. So Sam Hyde wants me to go on Fish Tank, and I'm totally down, maybe after the holidays, of course. And I appreciate the opportunity for that. But yeah, I want, like I said, I want to apologize for, uh, if I did yell at some random female the other day, I'd like to say I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to make you cry or hurt your feelers. But it's like, you know what? People see Cobra getting blackout drunk on camera and they gotta fuck with him. And it's just like, dude, stop. Nobody likes getting fucked with when they're drunk. That's just, that's pussy shit, dude. You're gonna fuck with somebody, do it when they're sober. You chicken shit motherfucks. Mm-hmm. This meat is so delicious. And like, I, I did do a public apology for that video on my YouTube. But if I yell at anyone during that encounter, I'd also like to apologize for that. So you know how it is when you get blackout drunk. Sometimes you're not aware of your actions. You know, you just, you know. And like I said on my uh, Making Some Life Choices video, I'm done getting blackout drunk on YouTube. If I get blackout drunk, it's going to be off camera, so nobody has to see it or witness it. But there's just no need to get blackout drunk. It's a waste of alcohol. Sure, you get a wicked sick buzz, but the next day when you're craving some booze and you're all out, it's kind of like, well, shit, you drank it all, schmuck. And also, again, I want to apologize to all the people in my life who care about me because all I did was make them go go and get all concerned and all feelers for me, like, oh, jeez. But happy holidays, YouTube. It's almost the weekend. 
Hope y'all are doing fantastic. And again, if I did yell at some poor lady when she was checking up on me the other night, I want to apologize for that. I haven't gotten blackout drunk on YouTube in God knows how long. And I was going live and feeling the vibes, you know, singing some Ozzy Osbourne, fucking just enjoying myself. And then I tripped and fell on me and ass of myself. And then subconsciously I'm like, people see me as this amazing dude, so I expect myself to be perfect and to conduct myself with as much grace as possible. But I'm only human to a point, so you know how that goes. Long live Aussie motherfuckers. That definitely tastes like 18% alcohol by volume. 1118 yeast is just awesome for making homemade wine. If you don't want to, you know, fuck with shit at the liquor store, you make your own. And if you don't mind waiting like a minimum of two to three weeks to make it. So yeah, I'd be down to go on Fish Tank with Sam High. I think that'd be an awesome opportunity to get some amazing exposure for the fucking YouTube channel, you know. And like Sam Hyde offered to pay all expenses to get me there and back. And I appreciate that. From what I gather, Sam Hyde's a comedian. And I'm like, all right, all right. He's a funny motherfucker, huh? I'm a funny fucker, too. I'm like, yeah, man. Because you know how Cobra fucking gets down with his comedy, man. I, I got some funny bits that I do. Jeff Foxworthy's You Might Be a Redneck. I did my own spinoff of that. and it's, You might be from Wyoming if... And the thing you got to understand about Wyoming is Wyoming is a cowboy redneck state. And we have rattlesnakes, bears, coyotes, and mountain lions. Oh, my. So the humor just writes itself. You might be from Wyoming if you met your future ex-wife at the rodeo. You might be from Wyoming if you've got more guns, trucks, and dogs than you do ex-girlfriends. If, if you've ever pissed on a rattlesnake while camping, you might be from Wyoming. If you've ever gotten drunk and tried to fight a bear, you might be from Wyoming. If the only blowjob you're getting is when you step outside and the wind kicks your ass a little bit, you might be going through a dry spell and you might be from Wyoming. If you need a tetanus shot to drive your rusted out pickup truck, you might be from Wyoming. If your pickup truck has more lift than Dolly Parton's boobs, you might be from Wyoming. If you've ever been kicked in the balls by a bull and then went out to eat and ate some Rocky Mountain oysters afterwards, you might be from Wyoming. It's like, welcome to Wyoming. If you spill your beer, we will hang you next to your fucking horse. And that blue collar comedy tour shit fucking makes me laugh every time I see it. You got Bill Ingvall, here's your sign. You got Jeff Foxworthy, you might be a redneck. And then you got Get Her Done from Larry the Cable Guy. And then you got, they call me Tater Salad. And it's just the funniest shit, dude. I think out of the four, I like them all, man. They're all fun funnier than shit. But Ron White's got to be my favorite out of the out of the bunch, man. Sitting there fucking drinking, smoking cigars. And you know, I can respect one. 
God damn it. I can respect Ron White's decision to quit drinking. You get to a point in your life where it's just like, you know, you got a decision to make. You either cut down on your drinking or you just stop. And me, I'm not going to stop drinking. I'm like, no, you can all kiss my fucking ass. I am not going to stop drinking. AA can kiss my ass. You know what kills me about the 12-step program? Honestly. That you got to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior to help save you from your alcohol addiction. And it's like, wait a minute. On Easter Sunday, they're like, his blood turned to wine. And I'm like... Get the fuck out of here. This guy sounds like he knows how to party. It's like, well, you better get my ass drunk before you nail me to the cross, you fucking assholes. One second, YouTube. I think I'm going to have to pour me another glass of that deliciousness. Tripped over the cord and knocked my microphone on the ground. Son of a bitch. Easy enough to fix. Generally speaking, when you look at your wine and you see that that tiny little layer... Right there, that's how you know it's done. When it stops fermenting and making those delicious bubbles. <laughs> One of my YouTube fans sent me a giant wooden spoon for stirring my alcohol. I appreciate that. And they also sent me a uh, how-to guide on how to make mead. What would you do if I just chugged this entire thing? No, I wouldn't do that. It's... <laughs> No, oh, that just smells heavenly, YouTube. The strawberry peach mead that I made. Yes. And I love making my own homemade hooch. It's a fun little hobby, and it's a great way to experiment, get your own custom flavors going. Set that to the side. Ugh. If you call yourself a redneck, but you'd never worked your day in your life on a ranch, but you love to listen to country music and get your truck muddy, you might be from Wyoming. And that's the thing of it, too. My family owns a ranch in this awesome state of Wyoming. And, you know, I've worked a couple of days on on a ranch before, you know, but I don't go around acting like I'm some kind of, you know. I remember this one time I was at the grocery store and I had my get up on, my hat, my makeup, whatever. There was this cowboy with his wife shopping and he looked at me and I looked at him and he goes, that dude ain't no cowboy. And I said, bro, I'm not trying to be a cowboy. I'm autistic. And then I pointed out the fact that my family owns a ranch in Wyoming. He immediately shut the fuck up. He was just like, oh, well, I'm sorry. God damn it, I would serve this at a bar. It's that fucking good. You know, if I had my own bar, I would definitely, uh, I'd make mead and I'd sell it at the bar. Sure would. An 18% alcohol by volume ain't nothing to sneeze at, dude. It's not as potent as, say, like some of that popcorn Sutton moonshine, but you know what? It's, it's good enough to get the job done. My Viking ancestors made mead, so this is kind of my way of paying homage to them. If a horse has ever farted in your face, you might be from Wyoming.
It's like, welcome to Wyoming. We got two seasons, wintertime and construction. Although I will say this, the weather for this time of year has been unusually warm, and I appreciate that. It'll give my Puff Puff a surviving chance, and I do hope I find Puff. I've been looking for him, man, and I just, I can't find him. He just fucking disappeared. And it's got me worried, and I'm irritated about it. And if I don't find Puff, or if he ends up, you know, <coughs> You know, I'm going to be very depressed. It's like, if you like to smoke crystal meth, go drinking at the Beacon, and then you drive out to Bar None just to fuck someone's goat, you might be from Wyoming. If you like to fuck your sister, cousin, smoke crystal meth, watch NASCAR, and you voted for Trump... You might be a redneck. If, if you like to drink moonshine while doing all of that, you might be a redneck. You know what I like to call the Southern Pride Flag? I call it the Incest Pride Flag. That's just a little Northern humor. Calm down. Like, uh, Cobra, watch it. I crack jokes about that, but uh, it ain't a laughing matter, dude. There are genuinely people out there who live in the Deep South who are severely inbred. And when you see it, it's just like, it's sad, you know. I'm like, dude, if it's like the 1800s and the roads are severely underdeveloped, and the nearest piece of ass is like 40 miles away. And getting to that person is a major pain in the ass. To some degree, I kind of get it. But at some point, you'd have to go, okay, we have cars, we have developed roads. Hmm. Yes, sir. What's a redneck's favorite type of bread to put on their sandwiches? Well, it's inbred. Yes, sir. What kind of bread likes to have sex? Pumpernickel. Pump her full of cum and give her a nickel. So did you hear about the horse who became a, a key maker? Yeah, he called his business Horse Locks and Keys. So what did the church bell do? Okay, I fucked that up. Hold up. What did the church bell Okay, I fucked that up. God damn it. Okay. Like, you gotta do stand up comedy on you. should know your own jokes by now. Come on, Cobra. Why did the church bell get cut off from sex? Because his girlfriend said, You better put a ring on it, asshole. There we go. You know why they call it menopause? Because men will put their shit on pause. Honey, what's the matter? Good lord, woman, that's you got a mustache thicker than mine. Are you one of them trans folks that CNN's raving about? They're like, no, you fucking asshole, I'm going through menopause. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I think life is the biggest troll on the fucking planet because when you first get married, you're constantly begging your wife for sex. But then when, when you get to that age where it's like she hits menopause and you lose the ability to get erections, now she's the one begging you for it. And you're just like, uh, I'd rather watch the game and scratch my nuts. And we're like, let me tell you something, folks. Just because your dick no longer gets hard doesn't mean you got to stop having fun. You just got to be more creative with it. I'm like, shit, if you can still come, then fucking A, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, your dick won't get hard, but you can still suck each other off. No, it, it it sucks getting older. Doctor's like, you got to cut down on your bacon. And I'm like, fuck you. I'll cut down on my bacon consumption when I'm dead, motherfucker. It's like, so how does your lifestyle compare? It's like, excuse me, doctor. Well, it says sure you smoke cigarettes and eat bacon. The fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, it's an, it's, okay, I'm an American. It's my freedom of choice, motherfucker. If I want to fucking have a bacon cheeseburger made with jelly-filled donuts and mozzarella cheese and mayonnaise, I'm going to fucking do it. That just sounds like a fucking, oh my God, that sounds so good. You take two jelly-filled donuts and then you put a bacon cheeseburger on top. Like you get a beef patty, you put it on there. Then you, you melt some mozzarella cheese. Then you put it on top of the burger patty with some bacon. And then you slap the top bun with like a little bit of mayonnaise. And, uh, dude, stop. We'd like to call this the uh, heart attack on a bun. The, oh, my cardiologist is going to hate my ass. Uh, my dentist is like, what the fuck is wrong with you, you fucking sick bastard? That is some seriously tasty homemade wine. God fucking damn, dude. Don't even know if I'm catching a buzz off of it, but it tastes good. It's definitely doing something. It's like, welcome to Wyoming. We love our trucks, our guns, and our cowgirls, and our beer. And if you don't like it, kiss my American ass. Now, I'll tell you what, though, being single is awesome. You don't got to worry about checking out other girls because, you know. And it's like, man, you know your woman's going to look, too. But if you're still fucking each other at the end of the day, it is what it is, dude. <clears throat> this one time I was dating a chick, and uh, we were hanging out at the mall. <clears throat> And this smoking hot blonde came out of the mall. And the dress she was wearing was nothing but a strip down the back with little gaps of missing fabric going up. You could see almost her entire ass. 
And I'm like, I, and I, you know, that's the thing. Anyway. I'm trying not to fucking stare when I'm looking over like, oh, Jesus, fucking H. Christ. And uh, as soon as she was out of the scene, my girlfriend looked over at me and said, that's a ridiculous dress, ain't it? And I'm like, yes, yes, it is, honey. That dress is ridiculous. And I'm like, cool. And I'm like, what do you want me to do? I'm a guy. Sue me. If chicks do it and you don't support it, you get crap for it because you can't handle a strong and sexually independent woman. But when guys do it, it's because we're fucking pigs. And I'm over here like, fucking kiss my ass with these dating scene double standards. Now, if you're going through a fucking dry spell and you haven't had sex in a minimum of four to six years, just give up and focus on doing your own thing and quit worrying about when you'll get laid. Because trust me, it's less stress. And if you want to approach the ladies on this issue, quit trying to get laid and just talk to them like they're regular people and watch what fucking happens. You rock that tactical soap and don't try anything. That's all it's going to take. Mm. How about some relationship comedy while we're on the subject? When your girlfriend says, do these jeans make my ass look fat? And if you're still willing to look at her and go, no. Of course not. I'm like, honey, you look amazing in those jeans. If you weren't in the mall right now, I'd take you into that dressing room and fuck the shit out of you. You know, why can't women just say, make me feel pretty? Why, why do they gotta give you those, like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, you're just saying that. And I'm like, I gave you a genuine compliment. I'm like, dude. I'm like, as long as I don't have to have a construction crane to lift your ass up onto the bed, why the fuck am I complaining? Because... Women of a certain caliber are easy to please, and I'll tell you why. Because, one, they're not very attractive, so most guys aren't going to go for them. So they're going to do everything in their fucking power to keep that relationship. And, two, they're easy to please because they're not used to being treated like a queen. And I'm like, you know, let me just, before you call me a pig, hear me out. Women are totally allowed to body shame dudes, and no one says shit about the hypocrisy. And I don't give a fuck if she's a 10 or a 4 on her best day, you know. You should still treat her right, because I get so sick and tired of hearing women bitch about men. But as soon as men bitch about women, it's like women are allowed to bitch about men, and no one says shit. But as soon as men do it, we're fucking incel pieces of shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? If women get, try to get laid or chase guys, no one says shit. But the second she gets it, oh, she's slut shamed for it. And now apparently in today's modern woke retarded society, the word slut is now a sex positive thing. And I'm like, I think society's done falling on its goddamn head. That's what I think. I'm like, in what fucking retarded ass universe is the word slut sex positive? But the second a guy tries to get laid or isn't getting laid, he's either called a simp or an incel. But the second he gets it, oh, get it, player. Ha <laughs> ha. Like, you want to simp-shame guys? Well, guess what? 
men can do it too. You slut idolizing mediocre penis. Yeah, I said it. You know, the dating scene is just so fucking toxic anymore that, like, being single ain't so bad. A couple of my YouTube fans are going through dry spells, too. When I talk to them about it, it makes me feel a little bit more secure with it. Like, you know what? You're not the only one going through some shit. And I'm telling you right now, a dry spell ain't the worst. Could you imagine having kids? Or being in a shitty relationship? No, thank you. Fuck sickos. I'm serious. If you haven't had companionship in like four to six years, just give up and do your own thing and quit worrying about it. And see what happens. Eventually you'll find somebody when you least expect it. When you spend less time worrying about it, and more time just focusing on your happiness outside of sex and dating, it's a vicious cycle, man. Society puts way too much pressure on adults to have sex. And women, on top of it, are overly sexualized in our society, and it's horse crap. I have not had sex in practically six years, and it's starting to, to suck a little bit, I ain't gonna lie, but it is what it is. So, like, you know, there were sickos out there, which I think... Sexual sickos are the worst. And to me, I think that's more disgusting than going through a dry spell. And for that matter, I would sacrifice my entire life going without sex or companionship, including eh, having a wank to end sex pests. That's absolutely appalling, YouTube. Pissing on Jeffrey Epstein's grave be like. That's some good homemade wine. Yes, sir. That took so long to make that I It'll get to a point where I'm like, you know, it'd be nice to have some of this for the morning or for the next day, so put it up, you know. I might have another glass of this and then put it up back in the in the in the closet, you know. The universe, though, I got all these fangirls that watch my videos religiously, and it's like, oh, if you only lived closer. I found a couple of fangirls be like, man, if I was in Casper Cobra, I'd totally end your dry spell. And I'm like, oh. It's like it's at your fingertips, but it's just out of fucking reach. And sometimes sex is more trouble than it's worth. You gotta deal with unwanted pregnancy and STIs and drama and what you thinking about? You know, don't you just, guys, you're with me on this. Don't you fucking hate, like, you just got done fucking your woman and the first thing out of her mouth is, what you thinking about? And what's our answer? Nothing. Just thinking about how amazing you are. It's like the conversations people have after having sex. It's just like there's just some things you don't want to talk about. You get done having sex and then your girlfriend's going, so how's your 
how's your great grandparents doing? And you're like, woman. I'm not trying to pick on the women here, you know, but come on. It's like, I just got done fucking you. The last thing I want to think about. <laughs> what you thinking about? Nothing. And ain't it great, fellas? Men have the ability to think about nothing, and it is just beautiful. Want to see how it works? Watch this. See nothing. <laughs> That's because women love to overthink and then they get super emotional about everything, so their mind's constantly. Bleh, 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 bleh. It's worse than having ADHD. I think having a female brain is like a souped up version of ADHD on steroids. And it's like, women, you can learn how to think about nothing. You just gotta look, quiet your mind. You just gotta quiet your fucking minds. You're sitting there, you know, thinking about your co-worker Cheryl and how much you fucking hate her guts. Let it go. Your best friend of me from college wore the same dress to prom that you wanted to wear and everyone else thought she looked better in the same dress. And ten years later, you're still pissed about it. Let it go. I think one of the key differences between women and men is when women talk shit on each other, they pull that pussy shit and do it behind each other's backs. Unless they're feeling really bitchy and then they just do it to your face. Whereas men, we don't give a shit. We'll just say it to your fucking face. And they'll be like, do something about it, you little pussy. Let me give you an example. Cheryl just got a new purse that she's so proud of. And she, she goes to the mall to have Cinnabon and coffee with her best gal pals. It's a cheat day. Oh, I'm going to put on the stretchy yoga pants because fuck it. And her best frenemies, Lindsay and Bree and... And then Carol are all looking at her going, Oh my God, Cheryl. Where did you get that purse? It's so fabulous. And then Cheryl was like, well, I got it on sale at the thrift store. And I tell you what, I got such a good deal on it, I couldn't pass up on it, you know. I was sitting there bragging about anyone who will listen, you know, about how much money she spent on it. Like, I didn't spend a dime on it, and I still got a good deal on it. And as soon as Cheryl gets up to use the bathroom, all her gal pals were going, oh my god, that purse is so fucking tacky. She looks like a cheap slut with that. Oh my god. She thinks she's all that just because she got a fucking Gucci bag at like 80% off. Fuck her and fuck her stupid purse. And then as soon as they, she comes back from the bathroom, it's like, hey, Cheryl. How was your squirt, missus? I like how women are always like, you don't pay attention to my emotions or my needs. And I'll tell you why most men don't do that. Because one... Our needs are not being met. And two, no one gives a shit about men's emotions. That being said, fellas, don't use that as an excuse to ignore your woman. You know, because women are f funny like that. If you pay attention to her needs and wants, you never know. She might surprise you, you know. And really, it depends on one thing and one thing only. You with me on this, YouTube? How badly do you want to get your dick sucked? Because your woman can say the craziest, stupidest, dumbest shit. And you look at her and go, what the fuck are you smoking? And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. If I argue with her, it's not going to get me anywhere. So, yes, dear, is the response.
It's like, here's, a, you know, the, you might be from Wyoming bits. I got a better one. It's like, let's see, argue with a woman or get bit by a venomous cobra. I'm like, I'm going to stick my hand in that goddamn tank and hope the cobra bites my arm. Take a sledgehammer to my foot and break all the bones in my foot and have to wear a cast for several weeks. Or have an argument with my woman. I'm like, where's the sledgehammer? Have you met my girlfriend Jackie Daniels? Yeah, we have a relationship and it's on the rocks. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll tell you what, no respect. Goth Dangerfield, i tell you what, no respect. My girlfriend came out as bisexual. She said bye to my ass and started having sex with other guys. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I know I'm going through a dry spell. Only one getting a piece of ass around here is my fucking toilet. That kinky bastard loves being shit and pissed in. Like, you fucking nasty little fucker. So, like, I went to Taco Bell and now I got the shits. And I'm like, here's Joshy. And then you got the fucking toilet, and it's like, oh yeah, I shit and piss in my mouth, you dirty fuck. And it's like, excuse me? Kiss your mom with that potty mouth? And then and they're like, no, just yours. I tell you, man, them toilets are into some kinky shit. So a toilet goes to the doctor, and the doctor says, Well, you look flush. Did you hear about the king's toilet playing poker? Yeah, they got a royal flush. I'm telling you, there's dad jokes, and then there's Josh jokes, and my Josh jokes are the worst. They're so fucking cheesy, you're either going to go, oh my god. Like, Cobra, you think you're funny, but you're really not. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking hilarious. With it being Christmas season, I am re-releasing Cobra's Crude Christmas Carols, which is an album I made a while back. And it's got five brand new bonus tracks as a double feature, which includes 25 minutes of stand-up and uh, like four remakes to the uh, Christmas classics. Deck the halls with my balls deep inside hollies of age pussy. Na 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 na. <laughs> Jizz the season to be a horny bastard. Hey, hey. This is one of my grandpa's jokes. You're gonna love this shit. Everybody was at the Christmas party feeling joy and merry. So Joey and Mary left. You know why Santa Claus is sexually frustrated? Because he only comes once a year. See why he likes that elf on the shelf, I'm telling you what. That's, uh, uh. Like, ho, 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 won't you touch my Yule log and jingle my bells? Suck on my chestnuts, you fucking Christmas cunt. <laughs> like, Cobra, you better watch your fucking mouth. That kind of talk's going to get you on the naughty list. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? You can suck a load of eggnog out of my fucking 
Yule log, how about that? Speaking of holiday jokes, this one I told a couple of weeks back or whatever, fucking... It's a Sean joke, so I think you'll, you'll like this. How do funeral home directors and morticians keep the fire warm during the Christmas season? A eulogy log. <laughs> a eulogy, it's, it's a funeral thing, I'm sorry. I got that kind of sense of humor where I can make puns out of almost anything. So like, oh, geez, I'm on Santa's naughty list. I guess I better cuck him and make sure his wife gives me a spanking. What do we have here? <laughs> Another troll text message block, delete, and ignore. Doesn't matter what the fuck I do. I can ignore it. I can respond to it. The trolls are still going to do it because, like I said, my YouTube trolls... are more obsessed with me than I am with Ozzy Osbourne. It's not healthy. <sighs> a friend with mead and weed is a friend indeed. Cheers, you fucking assholes. I hate the fucking holidays, and people are like, but Cobra, where's your Christmas spirit? I'm like, fuck the Christmas spirit, just give me some spirits. So why was Frosty the Snowman extremely happy? Because the snowblower was driving by. I'm glad we don't have any fucking snow in Wyoming right now because I fucking hate snow. I've been using my magic to keep the weather in Casper, Wyoming super warm for this time of year. Only for the sake of my fucking lizard. So if one of these days I go outside to smoke a cigarette and I'm looking for him, I'll find him, hopefully. People are like, Cobra, what do you want for Christmas? I'll name two things that are realistic enough. One, I want my puff back. And two, to be able to spend the holidays with people I care about. Even if they think Cobra's a piece of shit. Obnoxious. One second. Mm. Oh, I bet you wish you had a glass of this. Hoo-hoo! At 18% alcohol by volume, that's definitely enough to get you, get the job done. But if you want to create the ultimate Christmas cocktail, let me give you the recipe. You take some Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey Whiskey, 
you mix it with some Evan Williams eggnog and some rum chata with a little bit of hot cocoa mix that has like peppermint marshmallows in it. And then for a garnish, you drop a chocolate covered cherry on it. Oh, YouTube. It tastes like Christmas in a cup and it'll fuck you up. It's like, oh, look at that. That box I've had sitting on my uh, futon's gone because I got that box mailed off. That was a uh, that was a little bit of Christmas present for family members, and we're going to leave it at that. Because your boy Cobra sent out some tactical soap and some beard oil and uh, some magic wands and such. Not going to say who I gave it to because it's none of your damn business. But uh, they have a dog. And their dog that I sent the gifts to. Cutest little dog, dude. And I hooked up that dog with a brand new chew toy and uh, some bacon time bacon strips and some CBD dog treats. Which I purchased at my local, the same store I go to to buy stuff for my lizard kind of thing and that also included two bars of tactical soap some god of war beard oil some coffee from Folgers and a couple of wands and of course a little bit of booze because there you go I would have included some snacks but the box was getting full so I'm like ah. Because keep in mind, I put a big-ass bag of begging time strips in that fucking box. Every dog I've ever met loves begging time strips. I need to make some more wands. I got a couple of dowels I can turn into wands yet. So I got some more wand wood and I got some more shipping tubes. So tomorrow or the course of the next couple of days, I'll have to make some more wands for my Etsy. I also want to make a wand for Mormo. I said I was going to do that and I'm planning on doing it still. That's what's up. Oh, that is some tasty fucking wine. I like making my own mead. What's the difference between mead and wine? Uh, mead has honey in it. Which gives it an overall sweeter taste. How long is this goddamn video? Only an, almost an hour long video. Well, shit. And I'm not done sh doing my Christmas shopping. I made so much goddamn money this month doing live streams. All of that's going to go towards late Christmas gifts, etc., etc. So if you feel bad because you don't have any money to spend on presents for your loved ones or the people you care about this holiday season, there's nothing wrong with being like, hey, you know. It's not about the, uh, the presents. It's about spending time and with the people you love and care about. I fucking hate Christmas. And people are going, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, other than the two things that I mentioned, nothing. 
I'd love to win the lottery, but realistically, that's a one in a million shot, you know. I got a better chance of becoming lottery rich just doing my thing on YouTube. Ooh, I'm starting to catch a little buzz, YouTube. Look out. How much is left of this shit? Let's take a look here. <sighs> Half a jar. Yeah, let's save this for later. I don't want to drink this whole thing on camera. Jesus fucking Christ. My homemade wine takes a minimum of like two weeks to make. And it's so fucking tasty, though, so, like, I don't burn through this as quickly. Let's go and put this up, and, uh... I'm excited for Christmas to be over. And a lot of people get stressed around the holidays. So I'm not the only one. The important thing is to not be a Scrooge if you can help it. Because there are a lot of people, for whatever fucking reason, enjoy Christmas. And uh, it is what it is. Go ahead and put the strong stuff up and save that for a rainy day, man. Grab ourselves one of these. No. And I still got some left in my glass to kick ass, so there you go. Oh, fuck. That 18% is definitely starting to kick in a little bit. I'm just starting to feel... The feeling that makes alcohol so worth it. <laughs> but I'm by no means blackout. I got a good buzz going, but I'm not like super obnoxiously drunk, you know. And that's just my personal decision. Because if I'm going to get fucking blackout drunk, doing it on camera for the world to see is a bit disgusting. <clears throat> you know what I hate about Alcoholics Anonymous? It's all negative reinforcements. You know? You have a problem and you're powerless to do anything about it. And Blah, blah, blah. It's like, here's a thought. I would say, instead of saying you have a problem and you're powerless to do it, I'd be like, you know what? You have some issues, but you can work through this, and I believe in you. Like, you gotta accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm like, fuck that. I renounce Jesus in the name of Satan. As Christmas is actually a pagan holiday, uh, I call it, it's called Easternos, it's not called, you know, don't believe me, look at the star, the, the Christmas tree star, a tree star, ah, he made a land before time reference, it's like, if you don't know what land before time is, you're probably too young for me, hey, Cobra, your age is showing, and my name Petrie, <laughs> Three horns do not play with long necks. Ducky, yep, yep, yep. That's some good homemade mead. 
you know, if you bring something like this to a party and people have a couple couple cups of it, they're like, hey, 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 hey. What did you get this fucking wine, dude? This shit's fucking seriously good. And then you're like, oh, well, you like the wine? I made it myself. I become one of those homemade winemakers. It's a great conversation piece, and you can get some really unique and tasty flavors you otherwise wouldn't get going to the fucking liquor store. People are like, Cobra, quit responding to your YouTube trolls. And I'm like, don't tell me how to handle these immature retards. There's a method to my madness and it works. To me, it's a bigger game and a huge fun for me because it's like if the trolls text me some shit, all I gotta do is hit block, delete, and ignore. And then maybe occasionally I'll respond to their shit. Just to give them hope that they might get a little bit of attention, you know, so you take the one thing that they want and you play with their emotions on it and it psychologically fucks with them. It's like anymore when my YouTube trolls send me stupid shit through DoorDash, I take it and I give it away to people who need it. They've sent me, like, wood chips from the tractor supply company here in town. And I gave it to my dad because he's got friends who have uh, wood-burning stoves. They sent me tampons and cat food, and I'm like, well, we can donate the cat food to the local animal shelters to help feed sheltered cats. And then donate the tampons to, like, the women's homeless shelter. So I want to say thank you to my YouTube trolls for helping me give away all this free stuff. Y'all are spending your own hard-earned money to fuck with Cobra, and it's completely blowing up in your face. Anyways, YouTube, doggone it, I hate to leave you with it. On a side note, I'm loving the dye job on my hair. It's all black all around, except for the tips on my ponytail, which are green, which you can see right there. The salon I got my hair dyed at... Is very professional, and I would go there again and again, man. I'd highly recommend them. The only reason I don't plug them on my YouTube channel is because I don't want people harassing them. But I'm very happy with my dye job, and I want to say thank you to the fan who paid a little bit over $100 to get it dyed. When they first texted me, I thought, you're fucking with me. But then when I got the call and the confirmation number and all that thing, you know, I was like, fucking hey, it's legit. I do have a video of me getting my hair dyed at the salon in question. It's not very long, but it's like halfway through the process where you see my hair is black and then like the blonde is being added so you can apply the green. And if you want to see that video of me at the salon getting my hair dyed, Hit the like button and subscribe for more, and maybe I'll upload it. Maybe I won't. Jesus Christ. Well, thank you, Stumpy, for your $50 to Cash App. They're like, hey man, I had a great day. Wanted to make sure someone else had a great day too. 
And I didn't ask for it, man. People just give me money because they like my videos and dig what I'm about, you know. And the trolls are like, get a job, Cobra. And I'm like, bitch, I have a job. I'm a famous fucking YouTuber. And when you start to get like 80 plus thousand subscribers, you're a little bit famous, you know. That's like a stadium full of people right there. So I might peak 100k before or after Christmas. We'll see how that plays out. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I want to drink the rest of that wine in my glass and slam this beer. Bush light peach. It's delicious. It's cheap. And, uh, and uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit buzzed, so I'm good on the booze for a moment. Part of the recovery process is learning to recognize when you have a buzz and going, do you really need to get super wasted to enjoy your booze? And the answer is no, of course not. You can have a couple drinks and bullshit with you two without stumbling all over the place and having fucking cops show up to your apartment. And apparently I made some poor girl cry in that video, and I don't even fucking remember all of what happened on that on Saturday's video and like I said at the beginning of this video, man, if I made some poor girl cry, I'd like to apologize for it. Because uh, that's not what I'm about. Even though women can be cunts sometimes, men can be assholes too. And you got to just, you know, had I been a bit more sober, I would have been like, Oh, hey, you know, I think it wasn't her fault necessarily. I think I was just mad because the cops got called on me and I was clearly fine. Like when I fucking fell over in my blackout drunk video, you could hear me snoring. Like, oh, he's conked out for a minute. And then I wake up like, oh, shit, sorry, my bad. Hey, hey, you fuckers. Like, hey, you fuckers. This video's been like an hour long, so I'm going to have to leave you with it.